And our prayer is that you will find and meet with Jesus this morning and that you will leave different than the way you came in today. How many of you want to say yes to that? Yeah, right? So, well, whenever you're ready, take us in. We're ready.
walls to move, some mountains to move in their lives. It's the God of the breakthrough. You'll do it again, Lord. We believe you will do it again.
You guys in worship, as we were just worshiping, we're, I, I couldn't help. I was like, let me wait, let me wait, let me, I can't, I can't, I gotta come up. Um, just feel like faith is in the house today because some of us have been feeling like the song where there's just this wall. They feel, you feel like you've been wanting to believe God to break through this wall in your life, but for some reason or another, you can't break through. And you're praying and you're asking God, God, would you do it again? And so look, right now, I'm just gonna open up this space right here. If you wanna come, we wanna pray for you. I believe God is in the house today and whatever you are going through, God wants to meet you right where you're at. And let me tell you something else. Those of you watching online, welcome. We're worshiping God and God is in these moments and we don't wanna walk too fast and pass this by we know that god is here and so those of you that are that are watching us online you can chat online and let us know you need prayer and we would love to pray for you those of you that are here though i want to open this up if you want to come up and you want prayer we would love to pray for you it would be our honor to pray with you because we're going to pray that god would do it again whatever it is that you're going through in your life you have seen god's faithfulness in the past and you're wanting God to show up. Some of you here today are believing for God to do a breakthrough in your family and you're not really sure how God is gonna do it, but I wanna just encourage you, come on up, we're gonna pray together, we're gonna believe that God is gonna do a miracle. Some of you have moms that are sick, some of you have cousins that are in the hospital, uncles in the hospital, you need a healing. And I just wanna encourage you, come on up. We're gonna pray for you. We're just gonna let God do what he wants to do. We do what we can do. And today, you, by coming up front to this stage, you're doing what you can do, right? Everything is out of our hands. It's in God's hands. But when we come here, God meets us. And I just feel like there's a level of faith that is arising in our house today. A level of faith to believe that God can do what he said he can do. And so with your permission, those of you that are here, Danny, if you don't mind, just stand a little bit closer up to the stage. Come up closer, Bubby. And then I'm going to invite the prayer team. If you guys are okay with that, they're going to come. They're going to put their hands on your shoulders, and they're going to pray with you. And we're just going to pray, and you can continue to sing your song, and we're just going to pray and believe that God wants to do a miracle. It's not too late. If you want some prayer, you want some prayer for a loved one, come on up. We'd love to pray for you as well. And so if you guys that are up here on the stage, if you would put your hands out like this, like you're receiving a gift, and we're just going to invite the Holy Spirit to come. So Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come.
just keep praying because God is here. There are miracles in our midst, you guys. Keep pressing in. I believe that God is releasing miracles right now in our midst. People are being healed. People are being set free. Freedom is coming. Just keep praying because God is doing some beautiful things here. As you guys return to your to your tables, I just want to encourage, we got one more song, right? Yeah, if you want, I do want. And I want to encourage you that as those of you who came up to get prayer, I want to encourage you, this is your song. As you put God bigger in your life, you're, by your worship, you're doing something spiritual. And that spiritual thing is gonna catapult you into more freedom for your life and answers to your prayers. As you worship God, you're gonna see that God is fighting the battles in your life. So let's press in. We got one more, let's do it.
God. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for your love for us, God. We thank you for your grace in our lives, the grace that gives us the ability to do what we can't do on our own, that love that fills us up that says we can believe you, we can do what you've called us to do, not in our own strength, but in the strength that you give us, God. We love you. Thank you for loving us just as we are. Thank you for not leaving us as we were. Thank you for changing us. Thank you for helping us to become what you have called us to be. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we worship God? Can we thank our worship team? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. You may be seated. If you want to turn to the people at the table, say, wasn't that awesome? I needed that. I needed that. Oh, welcome, everybody, to DV. We are super happy that you're here. All of you watching online, you guys, can we welcome those people joining us online? Welcome. We're glad you're with us as well. And today, you guys, we are in episode three of this new series that we kicked off. We're calling it a brand new year, a new year to remember, a new year to remember. And what we're doing in the series, you guys, is that we are remembering that God is not done with us yet. Can you say yes? Yes. Right? He's not done with us yet. And there, he has plans for us. He wants to bless us in 2024. And the way he wants us to bless us, he wants us to, to continue to be who he's called us to be. So there's, a, there's a, an element of relaxing in that being. We're just, we are who God has called us to be. So there's a blessing in that. And then there's a blessing in us becoming, not staying in those things that have kept us bound, but we are becoming who God has made us to be. And then there's a blessing in us in believing for the future and what God still wants to do in us. And then there's a blessing for us when we bud into and we bloom and we flourish into what God has made us to be. This is a beautiful time, 2024, and there's blessing for us. There's blessing after blessings for us. And so what we've done in this series is we've talked about some, some blessing blockers, some blessing blockers in our lives that, that are obstacles that obstruct the blessings of God in our lives. We talked a little bit about that. Today, I want to talk about a blessing booster, those things that pave the way and open up for us to receive the blessings that God has for us. Are you ready for today? You ready? Say yes. All right. So I want to talk about that. One of the blessings is what we're doing as a church here that we started last Sunday, which is our 21-day prayer and fasting. And some of us have jumped in. We've been praying. We've been fasting. Um, Marie and I and some of you, some, many of you here are doing what we're doing is our fast, which is called a Daniel fast, where we're eating like fruits and vegetables and fruit, uh, I said that, fruits and vegetables and like grains and oats and kind of staying in that vein, saying goodbye to coffee, which has been hard, but we've said goodbye to coffee and we've said goodbye to meats and steak and all that beautiful stuff, pork, and I can keep going. But anyway, um, so, but we are saying yes. Why? are we doing this? Because this is a blessing booster. When we pray and when we fast, we are, we are opening ourselves up. We're positioning ourselves for what God wants in our lives. Now, why do we pray and fast? We not only pray and fast because of the blessings, but we pray and fast because it, we're, we're talking about a new year to remember, and we pray and fast because we are reminding ourselves that God is the number one person in our lives, the number one, that he is first. Can everybody say God is first? first. He's number one in our lives. And so it's reminding us mentally and it's reminding us physically. For some of us, it's constant reminders because I really want a cup of coffee. I really want to eat. I'm really, but you know what? It's a constant reminder that I'm not, that the world and God does not revolve around me. It's a constant reminder that God has preeminence in my life, that he's number one, not what I want, not what I wish I could do. It's what God wants for me and what he wants for our lives. Can you guys say yes? And so that's what we're doing in this 21-day prayer of fasting. We are seeking God. Everybody say, seek God. And we are denying ourselves. Everybody say, deny yourself. 
Look at your neighbor and say, deny yourself. Yeah, we are denying ourselves what we want because we want what God, ultimately we want what God wants for us. So that's what we're doing. So now I want to tell you about another blessing booster that opens up a path for us to receive the blessings. And, and honestly, that's what we're going to spend the rest of our time together on is talking about this other blessing booster. And that is that we are carriers, carriers. Can everybody say carriers, carriers? So many of you know that my wife and my, my boys were not here last Sunday because they were sick. They were sick. They were sick. It's been a rough sickness in our family the past couple weeks. Actually, it started with my youngest, Esteban EJ. He got sick right before Chris, and I hear the cough, AJ's back there. <laughs> and so um, EJ got sick right before Christmas break. For those of you who know kids in school, right before, I'm like, no, 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 no. The, this, the school break is about to come. You're going to have two weeks. You could be sick then. Don't be sick right before Christmas break. And he was able to make it. But then Christmas break happened, and Christmas, he was sick. He started getting a little better. And then what happens my oldest, AJ, gets sick this past week. So the week he's supposed to go back to school that all of us were praising God for, I mean, I mean, he really wanted, it was interesting, he wanted to go back to school, but we're like, the week he's supposed to, he can't go because he's super sick. He's got a fever, he's got a cough, he's got sore throat. And so Monday morning, I mean, this week, you guys, was all about me going, not just me, but us going to doctor appointments. So Monday was my oldest. We went to the doctor. On Tuesday, it was Marie, because she's also got something going on. Um, Wednesday was going back to the doctor, because AJ wasn't getting better. His fever wasn't breaking. And so we went back on Wednesday. On Thursday, it was AJ and my youngest one, EJ, in the doctors. And, and Friday was the only day that it was like, no doctor appointments. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is crazy. So it's been like that for us this week. And one of the things that stuck out to me was on Monday when, we, when I took AJ, the doctor said, yeah, he's got this viral thing. And it's going to just linger. He's going to carry it. He's going to carry it for a while. And he caught it. Marie and I, when I was home, we were talking about what the doctor said. And we we're like, I think he caught it from the little one. He caught it. And then the little one carried it. And then AJ caught it. And then he carried it. And then Marie caught it. And then she carried it. And then I got a little bit of it. And so I'm good, though. I'm good, all right? Just so you guys know, we went to the doctor, tested negative for flu, strep, COVID, all that stuff. So we're good. But we're on the men. He still has a cough. You just heard him. He's on cute. That was perfect. And so, and, and to top it all off, you guys, on Thursday, so Wednesday he was sick. Thursday, go to the, Thursday was his 12th birthday. And so he was sick on his birthday. So can everybody say happy birthday, AJ? Happy birthday. He loves you guys. We pray for you guys. I don't know if you know, but we, we love you guys and we pray for you guys. And uh, we, you guys have been so generous and so kind to him and to our family. And so we, we you know, it would mean a lot. And so I thank you for saying happy birthday, AJ. It means a lot to him. It means a lot to us that you guys would wish him well. And we all, we all wish him well. We love him. And so, but one of the things that stuck out to me as I was saying was, was that the doctor said, yeah, he's going to have to carry this for a little while. And it made me think about you and I, you guys. It made me think about how you and I, we are carriers. You are a carrier. Maybe not of a virus. Hopefully nobody here is sick. We'll pray God, heal everybody. I'm not sick, but, you know, we pray nobody has any virus. But you guys are our carriers. I don't know if you knew that, but you're a carrier. You carry something. You carry something. And, and, and so that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. And, and, and I want to tell you that you can carry a lot of different things. Some, maybe, of us here, we carry fear. And, and so what happens is we pass along, we carry fear, and then we pass along fear with everybody else that we interact with. We talked about how fear could be a blessing blocker last week. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the coming weeks, but we talked about that, how fear could be. Now, some of you could be carrying faith. And if you're carrying faith, then you pass that along to everyone that you come in contact. But the bottom line is, whenever people get near you, they tend to catch whatever you are carrying. And I hope you recognize today that you are a carrier. And so the question is, since you are a carrier, 
Is what you are carrying worth catching? Is what you are carrying worth catching? I want to show you from Scripture today. From the book of 1 Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul, he was writing to a group of believers, sort of like us, in a city called Thessalonica. It wasn't called Miami-Dade, Dade County, but it was called Thessalonica. And he said these words to them. He penned these words in, verse, in chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. He said, we always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. As we pray to our God and Father about you, he said, we think about you guys all the time. We think about you guys all the time. And then he lists three things right here. He says, we think of your faithful deeds, of your loving, I'm sorry, of your faithful work, got that one wrong, faithful work, loving deeds, and your enduring hope. We think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and your enduring hope. Can you guys help me say faithful deeds? Everybody say faithful deeds. Oh, I said it wrong. Faithful work. Everybody say faithful work. Why am I getting little, um, little notifications? Let me turn this off. It was bothering me. L- faithful work, loving deeds. Everybody say loving deeds. Loving deeds. And enduring hope. enduring. That's what Paul is saying. We think of that. We thank God for it because we think of this. Let me keep reading. Because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, whenever we think of you, we think of your faithful work, of your loving deeds, and your enduring hope. Now, why, why did they have faith, love, and hope? Why did they have that? They had that because of Jesus Christ, their Lord Jesus Christ, not because of what was going on around them, their situations, their circumstances, what was good that was happening, what was bad that was happening, what was going on in the world around them. They had faith, hope, and love because of the Lord Jesus. Let me keep reading verse 5. Paul goes on to say, for when we brought you the good news, for when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power, also with power. We brought you good news. See, not only did we talk to you, not only can you and I catch and carry a virus, but did you know that you can catch and carry some good news as well? Imagine if you will, that Monday that I brought AJ to the doctor, and the doctor is like, oh, is that what he has, a virus, his sore throat, fever, coughing? No problem. I got this little leaf here. I'm going to put some hot water, a little tea. He's going to drink this right now, and he's good. He's going to walk out of this office, no cough, no fever, no sore throat. He's good. Imagine if the doctor had the remedy to his virus right then and there. Like, wouldn't that be awesome? Say yes, yeah. right? And, and, it, it, and if she had it, Like, wouldn't we want to tell everybody about it, right? Why? Because that's good news. Because this virus, like, it's not just us. I don't know if you know. I don't know if you have any loved ones, but it's going around. Everybody's, not everybody, but a lot of people are getting it, right? And so this thing is going around and people are getting it. But what would happen if somebody said, no, you don't have to wait. You don't have to carry this virus, you know, for a long time. Right here in five minutes, take the tea, you're done. You're good. That would be amazing. And so what would happen is people would tell about, wow, this is good news, and it would spread. And then people would be like, wow, this is amazing. We're, we're going to tell everybody. And it would, good news would spread. It would spread uncontrollably because good news is what, you guys? It's con- contagious, of course. It's contagious. And so what I'd love to do is I'd love to tell you about some very, very Good news. You ready for some very, very good news? Not just some good news. We got something that's better than the cure to a virus, a a sickness. I'm talking about something that's going to help us, not just physical in nature, but it's going to cure a spiritual sickness because Jesus, he didn't come for those who were healthy, but Jesus instead, he came for those who were sick and he didn't come for the righteous. Scripture says, but he came for sinners, people like you and I, people like me, broken People who are in need. In other words, I hope you understand that our God, he didn't just shout from heaven, hey, I've got good news. He he came down. He showed his love on earth when God himself stripped himself of all the heavenly glory and he became one of us, just like you and I, just like you and I. And in the person of his son, Jesus, 
Jesus was born of a virgin. Therefore, he did not inherit the sin, earthly nature of a father, but instead the heavenly nature of a heavenly father. And he was perfect in every way. And so who did Jesus hang out with when he was here on earth? Well, he befriended prostitutes. Well, he touched the lepers. Well, he reached out to people that religion rejected. Have you ever not felt good enough spiritually? Anybody here besides me have ever felt, I'm, I'm just not good enough spiritually, right? Have you ever felt like you failed and you let God down? You can't believe that you did what you did or you said what you said or you thought what you thought and you feel guilty and you feel ashamed. And Jesus, he didn't come for perfect people. He came for those who are all messed up. And I'm like, Awesome, because that's me. For those who don't have it all together and, and their perfect faith, he came for those who've sinned and fallen short of God's standard of holiness. He came for people like me. He came for people who've hurt others, who've done things that they've, they're embarrassed about. You guys, this is good news, that we're not made right with God by our own efforts and by our own religious efforts. We're made right with God by the grace of Jesus through faith in him who is perfect and he gave his one and only son, Jesus, who died on a cross in our place, the perfect sacrifice, but he didn't stay dead. You see, that's really, really good news that three days after Jesus died, our God raised him from the dead so that anyone, and this includes you and I, who believe in him will, have, will be forgiven, will be changed, will be completely saved, and not just saved from hell, but saved for a purpose here on earth. Can somebody say yes? You guys, this is good news. And good news spreads. Good news is contagious, that we can be made right with God, not by going to church, not by giving all my money, not by trying really hard to stop doing bad things and only doing good things, but we are made right with God by believing in Jesus. You guys, that's good news, and that is what Paul was talking about, that good news, and this is the good news that is worth spreading. And I hope you understand, those of you that are here as well as those of you watching online today, that you are a carrier. You're a carrier, and you're carrying something. And so the question is, is what you are carrying worth catching? Is what you are carrying worth catching? Paul goes on to say in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8, he says, And now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to the people everywhere. The word of the Lord, it's spreading. It's going everywhere. It's, it's spreading out. It's echoing to people everywhere. He says, all over, even beyond Macedonia and Achaia. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. What if, you guys... What if your faith was so contagious that wherever we went, we saw and bumped into people that were telling us, man, Christian, have you met Christian? His faith, he's so contagious. He keeps bringing people from his gym to church. Man, Christian, he's so contagious. What if that happened? That wherever you went, people were talking about your faith, even in dark times. You might be going through a dark time, but you believe in the goodness of God, even when everybody else is afraid and not sure and worried and anxious. You put your hope in the good news that Jesus is, he's risen, and he will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. Scripture says that the, that the word was ringing out about their faith in Thessalonica, that people were talking about the, the people of God and their faith. And it was echoing, it was spreading from these people to people everywhere. And that's what happens when we, you and I, we catch a passion for the best news in the history of the world. When we catch a passion for Jesus, that news, we just, we have to spread it. We have to spread it and it starts to spread. In fact, I'm going to give you some examples of scripture where Jesus, he raised the little girl from the dead and the, what happened to the good news? You ready? In Matthew chapter 9, verse 26, it says, this news spread all throughout the regions. Another time when Jesus, he casted out some evil spirits. You guys, and that's good news. Can somebody say yes? yes. He reigns over darkness, right? In Mark chapter 1, verse 28, it says, news about him, talking about Jesus, spread quickly over all the regions of Galilee. 
Whenever God used his disciples to do a miracle, in Acts chapter 6, verse 7, it says, the word of God spread. It spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. Why did the good news spread? Why did the message spread? Why did God's work spread? Three reasons. We talked about, about them earlier. We read them, actually, from the people of God in Thessalonica. Are you ready? Because of their faithful in their work, because they were loving in their deeds, full of love in their deeds, and because they had an enduring hope. Faithful in their work, their loving deeds, and their enduring work. Those are three marks of a contagious Christian. Those are three marks of someone who is filled with the passion and the good news, understands the good news, and wants to share it. Faithful work, loving deeds, enduring hope. You are a carrier. You're a carrier. And is what you carry worth catchy. We need to embrace the truth. I remember when COVID hit, you guys, we were talking about it actually at our table. When COVID hit and the whole world stopped. Do you guys remember that? The whole world stopped. It was crazy. How in the, you know, how in the world can the whole world stop? It was like freeze. I remember. And people were scared. And this week I was just talking to a pastor friend of mine who was telling me that his executive pastor, so we, we don't really have an executive pastor here, but he was the one that was in charge of like the budget and the staff and like the facilities and everything that had to do. So th- he was telling me about his executive pastor got COVID a week and a half later, he passed away. And he was, I remember him telling, I hadn't, I hadn't heard that his executive pastor had passed away. And so I was, I was like, man, I'm so sorry. But it was just crazy. I remember somebody from church coming up to me and during the moment, and they were saying, Pastor Abdi, is this the end of the world? Because people were so afraid. It was like contagious. This fear just spread all over. It spread all over. And it's true. And the problem is that fear is contagious. Can somebody say yes? Yes. It doesn't take much for fear to spread uncontrollably. That's the bad news. But, 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 there's also good news. Fear is contagious, but so is faith. And so is love. And so is hope. And I don't know about you, but I am a carrier. I am a carrier. What am I? I am a faith spreader. I'm a love giver. And I'm a hope dealer. I'm going to say it again. What am I? I am a faith spreader. I'm a love giver. And I'm a hope dealer. I promise you, if you get too close to me, you're going to catch some of this. All right? You will catch what I'm carrying because of the Lord Jesus Christ, not because of what I see, not because what is around me, but because of the truth of who Jesus is. I am full of faith, and I am not full of fear. And I just want you to know this, that I am full of faith. I am full of hope. I am full of love. And I've told you, those of you who are part of our DV family community, those of you watching online, you might not be familiar. I know that Sulma, she wasn't able to be here because she was under the weather. We're praying for you, Sulma. You might be watching your part. We love you. We miss you. We'll see you next Sunday. God willing, you're all healed up. But, but, but those of you that are here, I, I, I want to take a moment. I just want to, I've said this before, that, that the church is not a building. The church is not what takes place inside of these four walls. We know and we embrace and we believe that we don't go to church because what? We, we are the church. We are the church. And, and the message that we carry, the good news of Jesus, it is the hope of this world. In fact, I want to brag on our DV community here for a moment. You guys, you are so generous. You've been so generous. From day one that I've been here, seven years now going, You guys have been so generous and so faithful in the way you give and in the way you you tithe and even beyond your tithe, that because of your generosity, we've been able to give away our resources to our community and beyond for well over these past seven years and that I've been here. And actually, this church that is going on 20 years has been doing it long before I was even around. And we are so honored to be able to do that. In fact, I was on the phone Telling, I was on the phone recently with someone who was telling me what a difference that the Doral Vineyard has made in their life. And you guys, this is amazing. This is good news. That is the power of God. God is using you. 
this one little local church to let our light shine all over, whether it be here, in our community, online. We have to remember and embrace this truth. Jesus didn't say, you know what? Just keep it in the four walls. Keep it at your house. Just do what you do, like just alone. No, Jesus said, go into all the world and let your light shine. Listen to me. If the day should come where we can't gather physically, and we will gather digitally because the good news will spread, what, what are you going to do? You're a carrier, so you become a digital evangelist. You can share this message or even today's message or other messages you, of faith, of hope, of love. You can share it with others, and you can invite people to be a part of our church. Hey, if you live far away, you can just get involved online. That's okay. You can just be a part of us, Right? And so you can share your faith on social media from wherever you are. You can let your light shine digitally. And as a church, we'll continue to do anything short of sin to reach people. We'll do anything we can because we want people who don't know Christ to encounter this amazing love. We want to reach people no one's reaching. And we're willing to do things that no one else is willing to do. So whatever we can do, we can pray, we can share, we can take what we have, we can give it to those who are in need because we are faith spreaders. We are love givers. We are hope dealers. In fact, Jesus said, do you want to know how people will know that you're my disciples? Let me tell you how people will know. It's not because you're going to be greedy and hoard all you have. That's not how people are going to know. It's not because you're fighting over who's going to be president and who's not going to be president, right? It's not that way. I don't know why my watch keeps going off. I'm like, leak, 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 stop. I'm like, check it. But it's not that way, right? It's not that way. It's, it's how Jesus said, how are they going to know that you're my disciples? They're going to know by the way that you love one another, by the way that you love by the way that you care for people, by the way you empathize with people, by the way you pray for others and give generously and encourage others and give hope, a word of hope to people. Can somebody say yes? yes. Listen, 2024 is another election year. Oh, boy. Everybody say, oh, boy. Oh, boy. And you know what? As a church, we don't want what happened the last election in 2020 or even the one before that in 2020, 2016. And what was that? A mess. Divisiveness. People were aligning themselves more with their political party than with their king of kings. Can somebody say yes? And we don't want that this year. So I'm telling us, preparate, get ready, because that's not who we are going to be this year. We're not going to align ourselves by a political party. We're going to align ourselves by what, who is our number one figure? Who is the one that we're going to put in charge of our lives? Because you guys, as much as I love our government and I pray for those leaders who are in our government, as much as I love doctors and I pray for doctors, you guys, they're not the ones that are going to solve the problems in our world. Can we say yes? We belong to Christ, and I believe with all my heart that this is a wake-up call for the church to do it differently this year. We're going to do it differently this year. We're going to stand united. Everybody say united. united. And we're going to be bold in what we know, that Jesus is the good news that changes lives. I've got hope in, in my Savior, and I want you to know that my hope is not in a government. It's not in doctors. It's not in what anyone else can do. I mean, I pray for them, but my hope is not in them. It's not even in the spiritual leaders of our nation. I love our country. I love our people. I love all this, but, but this is not where my hope is. My hope is in the one who spoke all things into being. Can somebody say yes? yes. My hope is in the one who is all-knowing, who is all-powerful, who is ever-present, the one who heals the blind eyes, the one who opens deaf ears, the one who has the power to raise the dead. That's why I am a faith spreader, a love giver, and a hope dealer. It's because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. It's because of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, the soon returning conquering 
King of kings and Lord of lords. Who is Jesus if you don't know him? He is the door through which we enter. He is the spiritual bread that strengthens our soul. Jesus is the one who delivers the captives, who restores the broken and strengthens the weak. He is our provider. He is our comforter. He is our source. He is our strength. He is our redeemer. He is our rock. He is our sustainer. He is our assurance. He is our firm foundation. He is our shelter in times of trouble. He is our light when the world is dark. He is the prince of peace, the lamb of God, the alpha and the omega, the resurrection and the life. Let me tell you about Jesus. His goodness is indescribable. His power is incomprehensible. His grace is irresistible. His name, at his name, darkness trembles. In his presence, demons flee. Death could not defeat him. The grave could not hold him. He is the risen king of kings and lord of lords. Come on, somebody say yes. Yes. You are a carrier You are a carrier. Is what you're carrying worth catching? You see, fear is contagious, but so is faith. Hate is contagious, but so is love. Worry, anxiety is contagious, but so is hope. The three marks of a contagious follower of Christ are what? Faithful in work, loving in deeds, and enduring in hope. What are you? You are a carrier. You're a faith spreader. You're a love giver. You're a hope dealer. And oh, I hope I'm speaking to some carriers today. Because what you're carrying, when you catch the passion of Jesus, let me tell you, it is worth catching. That's good news. Good news is contagious. Good news, it spreads. And when so many people are afraid about what's about to happen, when so many people are afraid about their circumstances, uncertain and looking for hope, I hope that you will let your light shine. I hope that your hope is contagious. Love is contagious. Your faith is contagious. I promise you, when you get around me, you're going to catch what I am carrying. And I am carrying a passion for the one who gave his life to forgive my sins and to make me new. Is the world scary? Yes, Yes, it is. Is it complicated? Yes, it is. Is God in control? Yes, Yes, he is. Is he all powerful? Yes, he is. Is, Was he surprised at everything that's been happening in our world? No. Can he still do all things? Yes. Yes. And will, will will he be there for you? Yes. But he'll be there because he promises he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. He's always good, and that's good news, and good news spreads. As the world is growing darker, church, our light must shine brighter. Somebody say yes. Because of Jesus, we are not afraid. We live by faith. Because of Jesus, we share the good news. Because of Jesus, we have hope. So whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, whatever challenge seems so big to handle, today we look to Jesus. We look to Jesus because he is here. He's here because he's good. He's with you. Let me pray for you in this moment. Would you bow your heads? And so, Father, we ask that in your presence today that you would reveal your love and that you would reveal your goodness to those who need you all over this world. In fact, and I'll just ask, even as odd as it may seem. Those of you here, as well as those of you watching us online, those of you who would say, you know what, I am a follower of Christ, and I want to spread the good news, I want to start doing that, because even though I've been followed, today I hear the word, and I've, I feel activated in that I am a carrier, and I am going to be spreading this good news. I am a follower of Christ. If that is you, would you just lift up your hand with me right now? And you might be or you're like, you know what, but I feel a little silly. Even those of you online, we can't see your hand, but God sees your hand. Just lift your hand right now as well. You might be in your bedroom, in your living room, and that's okay. Just lift up your hand. And by that, you're saying, yes, I want to share the good news. You may put your hands down. We're going to pray. Father, I pray that you would give us opportunities 
daily, not just weekly, but I pray daily when so many people are hurting and afraid to let our lights shine. God, may we be faith spreaders. God, may we be love givers. God, may we be hope dealers in all that we do. And God, would you show us those who need your love. And Father, may what we are carrying be worth catching. As we share the good news of your son Jesus, would you use us, God? Would you use us? And may your church continue to thrive. And even if we're meeting publicly like we are today, or online, or from house to house, or computer to computer, or phone to phone, or TV to TV, God, we will let our, the light that you put in us, your light, shine for all to see. And even as you keep praying today, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there are those of you here, as well as those of you online, maybe somebody invited you and you recognize that there's something really missing in your life. You are falling apart. You may have internal guilt for something that you did in the past or something that you're even doing right now and and you don't even know where you stand with God. Others of you, fear is just overwhelming you right now. The good news is that I believe you came to the right place to hear some really, really good news and I want you to hear it. I want you to recognize that this, this, what we did today may all be just for you because God loves you. He really does. He loves you so much that he became like you in the person of Jesus who was perfect and without sin. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. He died in our place for the forgiveness of our sins and God lifted him from the dead so that anyone that calls on him would be changed, would be forgiven, would be saved. Those of you that are here, those of you watching online that would say, you know what? I want that assurance. I want that peace. I want his forgiveness. I I, I want what he gives. I I, I want to be in this family. I, I need this assurance that my sins are forgiven. Listen, today you just turn from your sins. And we're going to pray a very simple prayer. And those who would say, yes, I want Jesus to be first in my life. I want to give my life to him. I'm just going to invite you to lift your hand up with me right now. Just right where you are. Just lift it up. Even if you're watching this online, just lift it up right now with me. And you can put it down. And we're going to pray together. And as we have folks that are responding by lifting their hand, we're just, we're going to pray. By lifting your hand, you're saying, yes, I need his grace. And so I'm just going to encourage you, just right where you are, just pray this prayer. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I just want you to pray this out loud with me. Even if you're watching this online, you know, just pray this with me. If you feel comfortable, I would love for you to pray this out loud with me. Everybody repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, please forgive me of my sins. Jesus, save me and make me new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit so I could follow you and serve you for the rest of my life. Use me to shine your light, to show your love, and to spread your hope. Thank you for forgiving me Thank you for saving me. My life is not my own. I give it all to you. In Jesus' name. DV family, would you celebrate with me? We're going to praise God together. We praise God because God is good. Can somebody say yes? We praise God when it is hard because he's still good. Can somebody say yes? We don't just praise him for what we see. We praise him for who he is. So I'm going to ask you, let's praise God one more. Today, we praise him for the good news. In a world that's filled with bad news, we have good news that Jesus Christ is risen. He's our savior. He's coming back one day for his church. And, he be, and because of who he is, because of what he's done, listen to me, we are faith spreaders. 
We are love givers, and we are hope dealers, and we give and praise for that in Jesus' name. For those of you that have prayed that prayer for the first time, I just want to encourage you. There is a, a connect card in the, the seat where you're sitting. If you would do us the favor of grabbing that connect card right behind you, just turn around and write. There's a seat pocket right there with some papers in it, and there's a connect card. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's going to come on the screen here in a moment. And that connect card, you just fill it out. Put your name, your email address, your phone number. And that'll help us because that'll be your contact information. You feel comfortable, let us know, right? And then at the bottom of that, there's a little box that says, decided to follow Jesus. That connect card right there. It's on the big screen behind me. It looks like that. Check that connect card off. And then in a few moments, our usher is going to come around with a black box. And that's when you can take your connect card and drop it in the black box. Also in that seat pocket is is an envelope, you guys. And that envelope says generosity on it. And if you want to give back to the ministry here, you're welcome to do that. There's different ways that you can give, but that envelope is one of those ways. Say you have some cash, a check, money order, credit card. You can put that information right there in that envelope. Also, many of you, most of you give electronically. And you can do that as well. You can do by Cash App. You can do Zelle if if that's easier for you. It Just simply use the email address give at doralvineyard.org. Give at doralvineyard.org. Dot org, okay? And that'll get to us, and thank you so much for that. And I'm just going to pray. We got a song. Um, the usher's going to come around. I'm going to come back up, and we're going to discuss for a little bit some of these questions. We have a list of questions at your table. Hopefully, you're not in a hurry. You can hang with us a little bit, and we have some questions that we'd like to talk with you. And so for those of you that are at our table by yourselves, join us so we're not alone. Everybody get together, and, and we'll get to talk together, okay? So first... The usher's going to come around. Kristen's got a song. I'll be back up in just a moment. guys for sticking around. We love having you. We have some questions that are going to come up on the screen, and we just want to encourage you to discuss those questions at your table um, and dive a little deeper into the message that you heard today. All right. Thank you, guys.